investigation started two years ago. Darul Uloom Islamic High School in Birmingham is a full-time independent secondary school, inspected by government-approved teams. It's required to teach tolerance and respect for other religions. But we went undercover because we had gathered evidence of extreme intolerance. Our reporter started here as a volunteer. He was allowed to sit in on some lessons, like maths, but they wouldn't let him into their Islamic classes. So in July last year, he went into one of the rooms where we'd heard they teach Islamic studies. And he left a hidden camera there. At first, our camera records exams and prayers. Then the pupils are arranged into rows for a school assembly. The speaker addresses all the pupils aged 11 and upwards. He starts by talking about people who worship ridiculous things. But there are some people in the world who decide not to do things like they are happy worshipping idols. This is how he describes Hindu religious practices. He says it's not the first time he's given this speech. In 2009, government approved inspectors praised the school for its interfaith teaching, saying, Pupils learn about the beliefs and practices of other faiths and are taught to show respect to other world religions. It seems the inspectors weren't aware of teaching like this. This is how British children are being taught to read the Quran. In a Muslim faith school in the north of England. Here's what 11-year-old Muslim children are being taught about non-Muslims in a full-time secondary school. And what they're told about other Muslims. A person who's got less than a fistful here, then you should stay away from him the same way you stay away from a serpent or a snake. He puts a question to the children about Hindus and other idol worshippers. Do they have any intellect? No. no. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the speaker comes closer to the camera, he only looks about 18 or 19 years old. Darul Alum School says its pupils are taught to preach the message of Islam and it seems our camera has filmed a senior student practicing. While he was preaching, there were teachers and other senior students keeping order in the room. But they did nothing to contradict his teachings. They told the children to be quiet and pay attention to the speaker. This is one of 38 secondary schools set up by different Islamic organizations to train the next generation of Imams and community leaders. There are at least 2,000 madrasas in the UK teaching more than 100,000 children how to recite the Quran. The children here are as young as five. On the first day of filming, our camera records a brief moment, which suggests that the reports we've heard of regular violence might be true. A teacher patrols the room. And then he kicks a boy. Then he walks down the line. That was all we managed to film in the summer, and both schools broke up for the holidays. On the first day of the new term in September, we went back to Darul Alum, Birmingham. 
the very first assembly back is taken by a senior teacher. The boys have been away for a month, and all of them have their haircuts checked by the teachers. Children with non-Muslim haircuts are sent to stand against the wall. The senior teacher says looking like non-Muslims is forbidden. He uses the word kafar, an often derogatory term meaning disbeliever or infidel. There will be regular haircut checks. Okay, you must make sure you don't get these uh, what was fashionable now amongst the uh, society. Okay, before I introduce something, and we must have taken them before. You know, he says teachers will take drastic action. For those parents that give us permission, yeah, we've got trimmers and everything here. Yeah, so don't expect professional haircuts from us. He tells them that looking like non-Muslims is a way of enslaving them. He associates British society with shaitan, the Islamic version of Satan. You need to free yourself from the influence of the, of the shaitan and the, and the society. Yeah? Uh, the, the kuffar brought so many new things out and you need to free yourself from, from slavery. What kind of slavery am I talking about? Yes. Mind control. Yeah? Mind control, mashallah. Yeah? They're controlling your minds. You're doing what they want. And ask yourself, are you part of that slavery as well? It's mind control. Are you part of those students you know, who prefer their sunnah, sunnah of kuffar, over the sunnah of the prophet? Ask yourself. Is it simple? Yes or no? The school's last inspection praised it for promoting tolerance and harmony in society. But in this assembly, the teacher tells the boys they should hate the sinful nature of non-Muslim society. You're not like the non Muslim out there, you know, all that evil you see on the streets. You know, uh, people not wearing hijab properly, people smoking, people walking like uh, they got something stuck in their pants. Yeah, these kind of uh, things, yeah? Yeah, you should hate it. They should hate walking down that street. This is a prestigious school. It's been visited by the Lord Mayor, the Chief Constable, MPs and dignitaries. The school says it has a community involvement program to prepare students for outside life. We are going into full-scale social segregation and separation. And unless we tackle this now, we will reap the whirlwind. What did you think about the repeated use of kafar? Never would a kafir enter Jannah until a camel enters the eye of a needle. It's like the N-word. It's a term of abuse, a term of censure, condemnation. Some of the teachings that we've shown you, do you think they could be described as hate teachings? There's no shadow of doubt. When you teach children that they should be intolerant of other faiths, have no respect for them, you are breeding hostility, antipathy, animosity to others. If that's not hate,